Today I'm making maple blueberry jam. This is a recipe that I got out of this book. It's called Batch. And this book um, is all about pre preserving foods um, in different, using different methods. Now I am making it with frozen blueberries because it's April, it's spring, and there are no fresh blueberries to be found. I don't anticipate it turning out any differently. The only thing is that I may have to boil it a little bit longer uh, to make sure that I get it to a consistency where it will set. But even if it's a little bit more liquid, that's okay because this jam is absolutely delicious like on top of pancakes and on top of ice creams and, on, and, and used in that way as well, not just for your regular toast. It's so delicious. So let's get this uh, recipe going. I have all my ingredients here. I have my bottled lemon juice because remember, we're, because we're bottling this, uh, we can't use fresh lemon juice because we can't control the acidity. I have one tablespoon of lemon zest, cinnamon sticks, one delicious cup of maple syrup, my blueberries, six cups, and here I have peeled apples, well the apple peels and the cores and seeds from three apples and uh, three cups of brown sugar. You place your thawed blueberries in a pot and you want to lightly crush your blueberries. Once you've crushed your blueberries, you're going to add your sugar and stir that in. And you need to let this sit for one to four hours. The sugar is going to help pull the juices out and make this all delicious. So you let this sit from one to four hours. And I know what you're thinking, that's an awful lot of sugar and is it going to be good for you? But when it comes to um, making these kinds of recipes that we're going to be preserving, it's really important not to cut down on the quantities because it can affect the safety of your product that you're jarring. So just put the amount of sugar in uh, that's recommended if you want to end up with a safe product. My cinnamon sticks. And this is a cheesecloth. I just took a cut out a piece of cheesecloth. So my cinnamon sticks and my apple cores and seeds and kind of make like just like a little bag with these and tie them up because this is going to go into the uh, the blueberry jam while it's cooking. It's going to give it an incredible flavor and I just tie it to make sure that it doesn't come come undone. Now that I've let this sit, I'm going to add the lemon zest, bottled lemon juice, the maple syrup, and give that a good stir. I'm going to place this bag that we've made inside the pot as well. And now all that's left is to put this on the stove top and bring it to a simmer. This needs to simmer at least for 20 minutes. And I'm going to be skimming the foam off the top if it does create a foam. And I will show you how I test to see if it's set. So I know it's going to go at least 20 minutes. I am expecting that it's going to be more because these blueberries were frozen. But we'll see. So I'm going to get these on the stove. I've got this simmering on the stove. I really wish you could smell it. The combination of the blueberries with the maple syrup and the lemon, and then with the tea bag with the uh, apple apple cores and the cinnamon sticks, it smells absolutely delicious. So I'm just gonna continue letting this simmer. To test if your jam is ready, put a plate in the freezer, add a spoonful of jam in it, leave it there for two minutes, run your finger through it. If it comes together, it's not set yet. You can tell the difference too when it's boiling. If you if you watch it, it, it doesn't simmer as much. It kind of uh, creates more thicker bubbles, and you can tell that it's getting closer and closer to being done just by the way that it kind of bubbles inside of your pot. As you can see, my fingers going through the jam, and it's not coming together again. So you can tell that the jam is now ready to go. It's done. Now that the jam is done, all I have left is to put them in the jar. I'm going to be using my steam canner. If you haven't watched it, check out my video on how to use the steam canner, the pros and cons of using steam canners. They're absolutely great. It's the same thing as a water bath canner, but just a lot smaller, easier to handle, a lot lighter, a lot faster. So anyway, check out that video. I absolutely love the steam canner. So now we're going to get the jam into the jars. Uh, the jars are warming. My jam, I transferred it to this cup and it's hot. My caps are hot, my jars are hot. 
So let's get those jars and get this going. So the jars need to be filled, just leaving a quarter inch head space. The recipe doesn't make a ton, but it sure is worth it. It is so good. As usual, you need to wipe off the rims to make sure that everything seals properly. Put the caps on. And put your rings on fingertip tight, not too tight. Then you need to transfer them over to your canner and get all your jars filled. Once all my jars are in my canner, all I need to do is put the cover and then watch the gauge until it gets into the section for my altitude here. Once it gets to the altitude, all I need to do is process this for 10 minutes. If you're doing the traditional water bath canning, it's the same thing. You just need to wait till your pot comes to a boil. Make sure your jars are underneath the water. Once it comes to a boil, you time it for 10 minutes. So the processing time doesn't change, just a little bit of the technique. So we let this come up and time 10 minutes and then our, our jam will be done. Once your time is up, turn the heat off your canner and leave it untouched for another five minutes. Don't remove the, the cover if you're using a steam canner. If you're doing the water bath canning, you can remove the cover, but you still need to leave your bottles there for another five minutes before you remove them. I've ended up with three bottles of the blueberry maple jam. Not a whole lot, but it will definitely be enjoyed just the same. If it would have been blueberry season, maybe I would have made a double batch because I have plenty of blueberries, but since they were, I was making them from frozen, I just went with the simple batch. Uh, like I said, if you're unfamiliar with steam canning or water bath canning, I do have different videos on those that explains in detail how to go about that process. So be, be sure to check those out. Once your jars have sealed properly, remember you need to leave them alone for 24 hours. After the 24 hours are up, be sure to remove your rings. Don't store them with the rings on. Write on top what it is because it could be beets, it could be plum sauce, it could be strawberry jam, it all looks the same. So be sure to write what you have inside your jar and the year. If you like the content, if you like my channel, don't be shy. So hit that subscribe button at the bottom, hit the notification bell so you know when I have new content coming out. And be sure to check back again soon.